Okay, let's have a look at access control lists. Access control lists control what users can see and they also control what users can do. I think I want to introduce the groups first that are built into the system. Once you've seen the groups and you know what users can do, it's easier to understand the bit where I explain what users, what users can view. Uh, because that links back to the groups. So let's look at users, groups, and these are the groups that are built into the system. This is my installation of Joomla where I didn't install any sample data. So even if you install an empty system, you get those groups built in, but you could delete or edit them or create your own groups if that's needed. Okay, we've got uh, different kind of groups here and the the top group here is the public group it doesn't have any special permission so uh, every user is by default in the public group we've then got the guest group which is a child group of public yeah if you remember how uh, categories worked and how child categories looked like yeah it's the same kind of layout here to indicate that guest is a child of public. So guest is for all the users that are not logged in. It seems a bit odd and you might think what's the difference between a public user and a guest user. Uh, but um, an example where you could use it is let's say if you do a website for a charity and you want people to help uh, let's say come and volunteer for our charity you only need people to see this message if if they are not already working for the charity. So people who are not logged in should see this message, come and join us and help our charity. But once you are logged in to your website, you actually have shown that you are already um, a helper of the charity. So you wouldn't have to see that message. So you could you could replace that message with some internal information for your helpers. So uh, if you set something to guest, this is basically for users that are not logged in. And this is useful if you want to display special information for users that are not logged in. <clears throat> but um, many, many websites wouldn't need that group at all. Then we've got managers, and as you can see from from this, Managers is a child of public and uh, managers can do everything except um, access components. When we install very big extensions, they are components that they go in here or they are also built in components. So you, you can't access components and you can't do super user stuff. Yeah. Admins you can see admins are a child of manager so they get all the permissions that managers do plus they get additional permissions in this case they can also access components so let's say if you install a, a, a Kiba that component that creates backups then a manager wouldn't be able to create a backup but an administrator would be able to use this component to create a backup so administrators can do everything except uh, basically what super users can do. Okay, then we've got registered users. You can see there a child of public. So uh, registered users, they can log into the site. That, that's all they can do. They're like public users, but they can log in. They don't have any other special permissions. Then we got uh, authors. Look, authors are a child of registered, so they can log in, and they can also create content, and they can edit their own content. So they could write an an article, um, and they can edit their own article. They can't edit other people's articles. Then we've got editors. It's a child of author, so they can do everything authors can do. But additionally, they can also edit 
articles, including articles that are not their own. So an editor can edit different articles. Yeah. Publisher is a child of editor, so it can do everything an editor can do, plus it can edit the state of an article. So they could change the state, for example, from you know, being unpublished to being published. So th this creates the situation where you could have users that can write articles, other users, they kind of have to approve the articles, they can check the spelling, for example, they can make sure you follow the official style guide, and then in the end you've got publishers, they can publish articles. And we got super users, a child of public, they can do everything. Uh, they can also edit the global configuration of the site, something the admins can't do. And they can create, edit and delete other super users. So when you create a user, let's say you know you, you got uh, your employee or your friend or whatever it might be, Peter and Susan, and uh, they both are user accounts, you can place them into different groups. So this is where we decide on the groups and we can then give different permissions to the groups. But access control lists are also about controlling what users can see, what they can view. And we do that here in access levels. Uh, these are the built-in access levels. Again, we can delete them, we can edit them, we can create new access levels. So we got public. If something has a public a viewing access level, everyone can see it. We've got guests. Again, this is only for users that are not logged in. If users are logged in, they don't see what, what's for guests. This is, again, this trick if you want to replace content for for visitors and for users who actually have have con uh, access to the site. Uh, that's just that. This is uh, the access level for all the users, um, including registered, uh, the registered group, authors, editors, publishers, and so on. A special are all the people that have special permissions that can do stuff. So that would be author and above. So if you've got an author, editor, publisher, that would they would all be in this special viewing access level. But that's just that users wouldn't be. They would be in this registered viewing access level. <clears throat> and in the end we've got super users, the viewing access level for your super users, for your super admins.